This video is sponsored by Curology. Hi, Eggly. It's me, Busica Simpson, and welcome back to Hot or Hot. And today we'll be reviewing episode eight of RuPaul's Drag Race season 15. Our queens were challenged to lip sync in a La La Perusa Smackdown for nothing in particular except the privilege of not going home this week. And girl, somebody better get Morris on the phone stat, cause I think there's been yet another rig. Seriously though, what's up with the lip sync assassins going home in the lip sync challenge episodes? Anyways, we'll be breaking down all the eight lip syncs as I saw them, as well as taking a look at some data from my patrons whom I asked which queen they thought won each lip sync. You'll see their votes reflected as percentages next to the names of the queens in each lip sync as we go along. And we'll of course also be taking a look at some of the Twitter drama from this week's episode as well. And we've got a lot to cover today, so buckle up and get ready to gag a little bit, for sure. And you know what gags me a bit? Actually, a lot of it. Every single day? My skin. And that's thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Curology. But you wanna know a secret? My skin hasn't always been a source of pride for me. I've had my battles with breakouts, uneven skin texture, and even cystic acne into adulthood. And I tried just about any product I could find, but I just couldn't manage my skin's appearance with any predictability. Until I found Curology. I'm super proud to say I've actually been using Curology's simple three-step routine for over a year now, and I couldn't be happier with the results. Results. Morning and night, I use the lightly foaming pH balance cleanser and the rich moisturizer with hyaluronic acid, aloe, and shea butter. And at night, I apply my custom formula made for me by a Curology dermatology provider. I first noticed my breakouts were less frequent and less severe after just a couple of weeks. And since I began my Curology journey, I've also noticed improvements in my skin's fine lines, tone, and texture. Plus, my excessive forehead oiliness is finally under control. Remember, though, your results may vary, and Curology is not a miracle working product, but it's brought a level of consistency to my skin that's truly invaluable. Plus, if anything ever pops up, I just throw on a Curology emergency spot patch. Oh, and for the sunny days, I don't step outside without the Curology sunscreen. Finally, a no-claw grease-free lotion with SPF 30 that melts right into your skin. And a hidden holy grail in their lineup? They're truly vegan, beeswax-free formula lip balm. I love using Curology, and you will too. You can start your Curology journey today by clicking the link in the description of this video. On their site, you'll take a quick quiz to assess your skin care needs and upload three selfies. Then a dermatology provider will take a look at everything and prescribe a custom formula for you and a skincare routine that works alongside it. Then use the Curology portal at any time to manage your upcoming shipments, track your skin's progress, and even ask questions to the Curology dermatology provider using the messages tab. So what are you waiting for? Just use my link below to start your Curology journey today. Thanks Curology for sponsoring today's video and bringing consistently clear skin to my channel and life. And now in the order of the fickle thing Fate grabbed their balls. First up, Malaysia Baby Doll Fox, who had the privilege and advantage of choosing her lip sync partner from the entire cast. And she chooses Marsha, 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 who then gets to choose the song Boys Don't Cry by Anita. And on the decision of Malaysia choosing Marsha to lip sync against, this was interesting, right? Because on one hand, we have really no idea what Marsha is capable of in the lip sync department. And our freshness to the art of drag in comparison to some of the seasoned pros here, like Malaysia, could be seen as a disadvantage advantage. But as it turns out, Marsha is not one to be trifled with in a lip sync. And because we've been watching the season from a third party perspective, I think we kind of knew Marsha might actually be really good in a lip sync considering how great she's done at the acting and dancing challenges in the prior episodes. And while we as fans might have seen this coming, contestants like Malaysia definitely wouldn't have because they haven't been watching their peers perform on a screen like we have. So I'd wager Malaysia thought she might have had an easy win here, but Girl, was she wrong. Marsha came into this lip sync with an intensity and fire to prove herself. Like, girl, she was thirsty for this win. And because she did kind of have this wild card element to her here, I think it was all the more satisfying to watch her slay the house down boots, yes, God, in this lip sync. Girl, there were front flips, back flips, choreographed quick movements, and like she was dancing circles around Malaysia in this lip sync. And that's not to say that Malaysia did bad in this lip sync at all. I actually think she did quite good. I think she just totally underestimated what Marsha was capable of. And you can kind of see Malaysia adjusting to what is turning out to be a pretty high intensity lip sync halfway through and she's like, oh dang, I need to throw in the high kicks. I need to really start putting some energy into this. And she does end up to a point, I think, matching some of the intensity Marsha was bringing, but it might have just been a little too late. Malaysia did have one of my favorite moments of the lip sync though, when at the end she just like falls to the floor. That was great. I give Malaysia a hot here and Marsha, Marsha, Marsha a hot, hot, 
And next up, Bruno's fickle finger selects Lucy's ball from the ball machine. And she selects to lip sync against Miss Spice, who then gets to choose the song Do You Want to Touch Me by Joan Jett. And what I loved about Lucy selecting Spice as her lip sync partner here was that she was not really ashamed to admit that she was definitely strategizing and selecting Spice. Mistress even calls her out later when she enters the workroom and is like, well, you got to lip sync against Spice, so you kind of had an easy win, and she's like, yeah, I did. But even if this was kind of an easy win for Lucy, this wasn't my favorite lip sync of the night. This song is a rockier, lower energy song. I don't think tracks like that always translate on the RuPaul's Drag Race lip sync stage. I think you just need a really special pair of performers to pull off a slower song like this, and neither Lucy nor Spice felt like they were really embodying this song as much as they could have. But there were, like, of course, the fun moments, like when Lucy was grabbing Spice's little coat and rubbing it in her down there spaces, and then rolling all over the floor with Lucy crawling around on her hands and knees was fun to watch. I just wasn't, you know, biting my neck over this one. But I give Lucy like a safe three flame hot and like spice a very soft two flame rot. Lucy's intensity here took it home for me in the end. Side note though, both of them looked incredible and were totally dressed for this song. And next up, Bruno randomly selects Lux's ball, who chooses to lip sync against Selena. <laughs> <laughs> and she chooses It's All Coming Back to Me Now by Celine Dion for them to lip sync to. Which it seems was maybe a little bit of strategy on Selena's part here, because she doesn't anticipate that Lux is going to be too great at this song, which actually she says is one that she lip syncs to all the time back at her home bar. But we do, of course, hear Lux say in a confessional that no, she doesn't love this song, but she is an actress so she can pull anything off. And Lux does pull the song off to a point. I will give her that. She gave us a very serious interpretation of this song, some great dance moves, giving good face, she knew the words, she knew what she was doing. However, Lux's performance of this song was just a little one-dimensional when directly compared to Selena's. Because Selena was able to give a really intense power ballad performance to this song as a bass layer, which she then, as the song progressed, added comedy layers on top in ways that you wouldn't necessarily expect. She would jump from these serious lip sync moments where she is just like lip syncing for her absolute life to like peeking between her legs at the judging panel. Panel, falling to the floor and then like at the end of the song, you know, giving birth or eating something. It was camp, and she absolutely teleported me to Mars with this. And this was such a great moment for her. Like, truly a landmark moment for her time on Drag Race so far, I think. Because much like Marsha, she has, I think, been struggling to be the leader of the pack, yet is such an incredibly talented performer and brilliant drag artist. And there was just a lot of great payoff in seeing Selena absolutely give it her all in this performance and be rewarded with the win. She absolutely deserved it, and I think she gets a flaming hot in this performance, but Lux also also gets a very safe hot for me here. And while these first couple of lip syncs have, I think, been pretty cut and dry on who should have won them, the next few I think are where we'll start to see the fan base start to disagree a little bit on who they think should be taking the wins. The next ball Bruno picks from the ball cage is Mistress Isabel Brooks, who then selects Jax to lip sync against. And we do hear Mistress in a confessional say that she's choosing a lip sync partner who she thinks will choose a song that she wants to lip sync to. Which works out really well for her because they end up lip syncing to the song she wants Wanted, Tell It To My Heart by Taylor Dane. And while that is absolutely the song of these songs that I would have wanted to lip sync against, I've got to say, choosing between Jax, Sasha Colby, and Anitra to lip sync against, Mistress was in between a rock and a hard place. Like, girl, competition. And this lip sync for me personally was the toughest call of the night. On one hand, we've got Mistress giving some good old Texas drag. I mean, good drag lip syncing. This is a pro on the stage, commanding her presence and demanding the judges and cameras attention. She was captivating in all of her movements, had a little reveal, and was even adding some great comedic layers to her performance, like at the end when she was going the like kind of rolling her eyes back and forth and like doing the robot movements. That was great. I absolutely love that. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Like, Mistress absolutely gave the peaks and the valleys that this song demanded. Plus, her outfit kind of reminds me of the pink Power Ranger, who's my favorite Power Ranger, so I may have been a little bit biased here. But her slower style of performance, I think, was so much fun to see, especially compared to a performer like Jax, who was twirling and flipping and acrobatting and flipping and jumping and back flipping and front flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping. Girl, she was doing a full gymnastics routine up there, and sometimes that crazy energetic type of performance doesn't necessarily work if it's so much all the 
time, just constantly going. But Jax has a really special way of delivering these hyper energetic performances that also show a level of restraint. And that's where I would say Jax's true talent in dancing performance lies. She takes you right to the brink of too much and then brings you back down and then brings you back up and then brings you back down. She's really fun to watch. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. I think Jax is the best dancer of this entire cast. She is breathtaking on the stage. My call though here, I am going to agree with the judges. I would give it to Mistress based on the lip sync edit that we saw. Both girls though, I would get five hot flames for their performances. I did specify though that I would give it to Mistress based on the edit we saw. I say that because when we see Mistress enter the workroom, the entire rest of the cast is sitting on the couch going, wait, we thought Jax was going to be coming in here. You were not even giving it your full energy. Like Jax was giving it 100%. She should have won that. And everyone is gooped. Everyone is gagged. And that tells me one of two things. That either Jax had even more stunts and tricks and goops and gags that were just cut out of the edit that took her to another level above Mistress that we just weren't able to see. Or it tells me that the other girls are just wanting to fan the flames of drama and kind of get under Mistress's skin a little bit. And get under her skin, they sure did. She was pointing out that she had to select a lip sync partner among like, you know, the best lip syncers in the entire cast. And this was where she calls out Lucy for getting lucky for getting to pick Spice to lip sync against. Mr. did also tweet out when the episode was airing, the girls will never be happy for me. Still one though. I'd of course love to see the unedited full lip sync between these two that the rest of the cast got to see. But regardless of what they thought, I think Mistress and Jax both had a lot to be proud of here. And next up, the lip sync of the night. The Fickle Finger of Fate has left Anitra and Sasha Colby as the final two lip syncers in the first round of this Lala Perusa. And my God, was it worth the wait. So they lip sync to I'm in Love with a Monster by Fifth Harmony, which was chosen by Anitra, whose ball Bruno chose from the ball machine. And while the Mistress and Jack's lip sync was, I think, a tough call in an interesting way because they were both giving such different performances, this one was a tough call because, oh my god, I couldn't take my eyes off of either of them. And they were matching each other's energy in all of these crazy ways, like Sasha out there breaking her neck, flipping that ponytail around, Anitra walking that mother-tucking duck up and down the stage. And like, they were both captivating until the very last second of that song. Like with Sasha in the back middle of that stage, jumping around and then jiggling her booty and then was flipping her ponytail. And then Anitra comes in with that thank you, good night, death drop. I was gagged. I was gooped. I'm still gagging. I'm still shaking. I'm still crying. <laughs> gagged a little bit for sure. But wow, this lip sync was the lip sync that made me wish Rue could have just progressed both of them to the next round because they turned it out. Both Anitra and Sasha get five <sighs> flames for me here and oh my God. If these two make it to the final four and they're lip syncing for the crown, RuPaul, she's gonna have to phone a friend, ask the audience and maybe even do a double crowning because how can you decide? I do though here agree with the Sasha win just by a hair. And next we enter round two of the Lala Perusa where Malaysia is again chosen first. And she chooses Spice to lip sync against, who chooses the song Don't Go Yet by Camila Cabello. And this song selection was apparently strategy meant to throw Malaysia off because Spice suspected she didn't know the words of the song. But as it turns out, neither did Spice, which is hands down to me the funniest part of the episode as I'm watching, realizing that neither of these queens knows the song they're lip syncing to. And the judges were seeing it too. Like RuPaul was doing that one face where she's kind of watching in like horror or disgust or like confusion and she's wanting to send them both home. And like not only was RuPaul clearly in discomfort watching them lip sync, but both queens were also very clearly not comfortable showing RuPaul that they didn't know the words either. And Malaysia did on Twitter talk about this a little bit saying, literally the only song I didn't learn, LOL, I knew every other song. And then apparently getting some blowback from some of the fans, she later tweeted, I didn't know the words get over it. Y'all be mad at everything. And I'm only addressing it because y'all keep tagging me. I don't care. I'm booked for the rest of the year and that song isn't on the list. Enjoy the show. It's an iconic moment. And if they wanted to get rid of both of us, they would have. Y'all always creating all these new rules. SDFU. The dancing they did to this song, I suppose, was fine. But as the lip sync goes, I would give them both rats. It was just a really unfortunate lip sync for them both. And also unfortunate for Spice, considering she was totally dressed for this lip sync and the prior one, yet kind of flopped on both fronts. Anyways, Rue selects Malaysia as the winner here, and sure, if I had to choose one queen to win from this lip sync, I probably would choose Malaysia because she did radiate a little more confidence in what she was doing than Spice, but 
Nah. Anyways, the fickle finger of fate decides that the next lip sync is going to be a three-way. And I usually don't like three-ways as far as lip syncs go, but this one between Lux, Anitra, and Jax was one to watch. Like typically when there are three or more queens on the stage trying to give a lip sync, it just feels really chaotic and distracting. Flashbacks to season 11's lip sync when like every queen was on there. <sighs> But this three-way lip sync was really special in the sense that, yes, there was way too much going on on the stage, but the three lip syncs somehow felt a little bit in sync. Like their lip sync styles just complemented each other in a way that felt more natural and not as chaotic as some stuff that we've seen in the past. So these three lip sync to The Right Stuff by Vanessa Williams. And this was another lip sync I was holding my breath, enjoying every second. Lux, Anitra, and Jax each separately killed this lip sync, but my two favorites here were actually Anitra and Jax. I would say Lux was just like one flame less in hot ratings for me than the other two, but like by a very small amount. There was just a little more intensity and excitement, I think, that Jax and Anitra brought to this lip sync. And seeing Lux take the win in this lip sync gagged me not only because I thought either Jax or Anitra should have taken it, but also because I thought that they were going to select two queens to win from these three, which would have made sense to have two queens progress from this lip sync because it would have naturally left us with two queens at the very bottom to finish the lip sync bracket. But only Lux progresses, which leaves us with Jax, Spice, and Anitra as the last three. And we're like, hmm, what the hell's gonna happen here? And RuPaul announces the final twist of this episode. One more ball is going to be chosen, which as it turns out was Anitra's. And she gets the privilege of choosing one of the remaining two queens to be safe and the other to lip sync against. And the gag of the season, she chooses Spice to be safe. And if that doesn't say Anitra is confident in her lip syncing ability, I don't know what does because she ends up having to lip sync against Jax, the lip sync assassin of the season in the final lip sync. Like, come on, she very easily <laughs> could have chosen Jax to be safe, lip synced against Spice and guaranteed a Shantae for herself. But mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest queen of them all? It's Anitra. And she even says, When I tell you that those girls, both of them, they just love drag and they love to enjoy themselves and they love to make people happy. She has the true spirit of drag and love, and that's why I cut that out. We know it would not be fair. Even she knew it. But I think beyond choosing a fair fight, she also made a very careful strategic decision here. In choosing Spice to be safe here, she accomplishes not only gaining fan favor in declaring she wants a fair fight, but also avoids the wrath of the Spice fan base in the future, who surely would have raged against her. Plus, she also puts herself in a position where she is now lip syncing against somebody who is in the bottom of the episode for the third time in a row. And because Anitra is confident in her ability as a lip syncer, she pretty much knows the unwritten rule of drag race is if you're in the bottom for your third time, much less your third time in a row, and your lip sync partner gives a good lip sync, no matter how well you do, you're probably gonna go home. Like the other person would have to totally blow it for you to make it past that third bottom. And the lip sync between these two to finally by CC Peniston is another, oh my God, wow. They both killed it. Like seriously, they both absolutely killed it. It was a pleasure to watch these two lip sync again. And is it absolutely absolutely crazy that two of the best dancers and overall lip syncers in this competition are here in the bottom of a lip sync bracket? Lip syncing against each other? Yes, it's crazy. But that's just, I suppose, how the cookie crumbled. Or, you know, how the producers wanted it to go the whole time. I think both queens absolutely slayed this lip sync and deserve but yes, Anitra did take the win for me here. And honestly, it would have felt wrong to not have Anitra win here, considering how amazing she did the entire episode. But Jax did too, don't get me wrong. It just almost felt like the writing was on the wall from the beginning of the episode that Jax was not going to make it through the La La Perusa. And finally, Jax goes home after three times in the bottom. And it certainly is not right, but I suppose it's okay. But how crazy is it that who I think is the best dancer in this competition went home in the dancing challenge? And how crazy is it that this pretty much happened last season too with Jasmine Kennedy? There seems to be a very strange pattern emerging in these recent seasons of Drag Race where the best lip syncer and lip sync assassin of the season is sent home in the lip sync Lala peruses. A coincidence or conspiracy?
Either way though, definitely a gag. As my final thoughts on this episode though, I personally would have loved to have spent a little more time with each lip sync because there were so many of these lip syncs that were just absolutely captivating to watch that had me on the edge of my seat. There are just some top tier performers in this cast and they absolutely proved that this episode. And while I think the Lollapurza was for the most part called fairly by the judges, I do think that the three-way lip sync and then Anitra having to choose one queen to be safe at the very end just kind of felt less like the fickle finger of fate deciding who was doing what and more like the producers meddling to get what they wanted out of the season. But hey, it's reality TV after all and it's nothing we're not used to. At least it was a good time. But I'd also of course love to hear your thoughts about this episode so let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. And finally, let's talk hottest hats. If I were choosing one standout performer throughout the entire Lala Perusa to give a hottest hot to, I would give it to Anitra. And as for my hottest hot lip sync, I would give it to the Anitra and Sasha Colby lip sync. I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hot lip sync over on patreon.com slash bussyqueen, and they too voted for the Sasha Colby and Anitra lip sync. Don't forget you can become a patron of the Bussy Queen channel by clicking the link in the description of this video. For just a couple dollars a month, you'll get access to exclusive content, the ability to vote in hottest hot polls, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, and more. You can also help support the channel by becoming a channel member. You can do so by clicking the join button next to the subscribe button. Bussy Queen channel members get these cute little flame icons next to their name in the comments, and at the bus driver tier even get their names in the description of my videos. And finally, I want to give a huge thanks to today's video sponsor, Curology, who's been keeping my skin consistently clear for over a year now. And you can start your Curology journey today by clicking the link in the description of this video. And finally, I want to say thanks to my generous patrons who make my channel possible and give a special shout out to Serge Corvus, who's just joined my Patreon at the hottest high tier, and Ashley Brungart, Daniel Sendez, Felicia, Frankie, Hector Simancas, Jeffrey Kyle, Laura, Lissette, Louis Labrador, Ruff, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Mato, Bandit Kitty, Sailor, Sexy Winnie the Blue, Steven Topher, Wheelie, and Will and Tana, who were all supporting me at my Busty Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. Oh, God.